All right, guys, we are back in my garage for another video. And today we are going to be talking about the B58TU2 again. I know a week or so ago I posted a TikTok about it and you guys were quick to jump in the comments and tell me that the TU2 is old news. Everybody knows about it. Everybody knows how it works. But what you might not know is we've pretty much gotten confirmation on when it's going to be arriving in three and four series vehicles. So this is really good news if you're an enthusiast, maybe you want to enjoy the new platform in a much smaller chassis that can set better performance times and just be more fun to drive. But it also begs the question, is it even worth it? You know, if we see it on the horizon, you might be planning on ordering a car soon. So you're wondering, should you go ahead and place an order now and get it in while you can? Or should you wait until the new B58 arrives in these new vehicles? So I'm just gonna go ahead and share some of my thoughts in this video to give you an idea of what you can expect and hopefully help you make that decision for yourself. So hopefully you find this video useful. Now, as always, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. So a quick recap, we have the new B58 TU2 coming to three and four series vehicles. Now the Gen 1 came out in 2015, the Gen 2 or the B58 TU came out in 2019, and now we have the TU2 or the Gen 3 B58 that came out last year. It was originally only in 7 Series and X7 models, and that's not something that's too big of a surprise. You know, BMW likes to introduce new features and options in their flagship cars, and then it slowly trickles down to the smaller, cheaper platforms. And we expected that to happen, and sure enough, we've seen that happening slowly over the past year or so. It is now also available in the LCI X5 ever since this summer, and we also now see it in the new G60 540i that was just released this fall. So it's slowly making it down to the smaller vehicles, and now we've finally gotten a time frame for when it will be in the M340i and M440i. Now, keep in mind this information is specific to the United States for now. There may be other regions that are affected, but it does not appear to be worldwide. It seems like a lot of that decision making is based on emissions requirements. So over time, it'll probably begin to appear in other regions, but this initial release will primarily be in the U.S. markets. So the first thing that we're seeing is on the 4 Series, they will get it first. It's going to be coming as a part of the 4 Series LCI. So when the life cycle impulse or the mid-cycle refresh is implemented next spring, it will include the B58TU2. Now it's also going to make it to the 3 Series, but their model year cycle is a little bit staggered from the 4 Series. So they don't expect it to actually go into production until the summer around July 2024. But either way, both of them should see the new TU2 in the 2025 model year vehicles. Now this is great, again, because for enthusiasts, we like to see the newest platforms being implemented in smaller chassis that we can enjoy. And particularly with the TU2, it has some really nice upgrades, including the intake manifold. That's the one that most people are you know, really excited about because it has a much bigger, larger core. And you can also see that the core is exposed. So it's kind of similar to how the S55 and S58 intercoolers are. And those cars have really good, high quality, cooling systems for their intake temps. And so it seems like this should be much more reliable and efficient on the Gen 3 B58 compared to the Gen 1 and Gen 2 intake manifolds. But on top of that, it also has port injection from the factory. So there are six injectors lined up on top of the intake manifold runners, and they are all installed from the factory. They are controlled by the factory DME. All of that is just provided to you with the platform as it comes. So it's really nice to think if you want to add big power, run higher ethanol mixes and things like that, you'll be able to do it with much less mods. You won't need auxiliary controllers or anything like that. You can just use the factory fuel system with maybe some upgraded components to get all the fuel that you need for your high horsepower build. Now, unfortunately, this is where the cons start to stack up. And this is probably why as an enthusiast, I would not recommend jumping right into the new platform. 
The first big reason is the new DME is still locked. So when you get your car, you won't be able to send it to FEM2, you won't be able to OBD unlock it or flash it. You won't really be able to do anything other than enjoy the stock tune for now. There is a JB4 piggyback available that appears to still be in beta. So hopefully by next summer, when these cars start cranking out, they've got it you know, fully dialed in and ready for its official release. But at this point, that's going to be the only option is to run a piggyback. Now it does make really good power. On their product page, you can see it makes over 500 wheel horsepower power on an ethanol mix so that's really good especially just for a piggyback that usually runs into you know fuel system limits and things like that this one clearly is able to push plenty of power without very many mods so i mean it'll work and it'll be an option for those of you that are willing to push your car to that level but it doesn't seem like you'll be able to slap big turbo kits on it and you know really make high horsepower builds like what some people are probably thinking now also speaking of power, I have not seen a high output TU2 listed on any of the BMW documentation. I haven't seen it even rumored anywhere. So it's my understanding that it's going to be that same middle power two port engine that's going to be in the M440i and the M340i, which actually makes less power than the current Gen 2 B58. So from the factory, the Gen 3 is rated for 375 horsepower or 280 kilowatts compared to 382 horsepower or 285 kilowatts. So it might actually be slower in factory form. It's hard to say, you know, maybe there are other things as far as efficiency and torque that can make up for the horsepower difference. But the fact that they're actually going to a new engine that makes slightly less power, I think that's gonna be a hard sell for them. And they probably won't struggle with it too much since that'll be all that's available. But for people that are also considering used vehicles or trying to get in orders now before next year, it kind of creates a rush because now you're going to want to rush and jump in to get your order so that you can get the higher horsepower engine before it goes out of production. So I was kind of surprised to see that. And again, time will tell. Maybe they introduce an upgrade down the road. But at least for this initial release, it seems like it's going to be that same two port 375 horsepower motor that'll be in the M340 and M440i. Now on top of that, it's gonna be slightly slower, less easy to tune, and it also seems to be going through some growing pains, which at least in our case, it was in these other vehicles for a year or two before it gets into the three and four series, but I'm not sure that all of the problems have been addressed yet. Most of the things that I hear from you guys, and of course, a big thank you to all the technicians and people that message me and let me know things that they're seeing in the shop and stuff like that. But most of you guys have told me that there seem to be some issues with the cylinder heads. I'm not sure if it's directly related to the change to electronic Vanos because now it's not controlled by oil pressure anymore. It's all controlled by an electric signal, but that may be causing an issue. It also seems like on the exhaust side where they made changes for emissions and efficiency, some of the valve springs might have issues. Maybe there was a production problem or maybe the spec for the springs is just a little bit too weak. So some of them actually move and move out of position. And of course that can cause a really big issue as well. So I've seen people getting, you know, cams swapped. I've seen cylinder heads swapped, lots of issues happening. And these are just on, you know, seven series and X sevens at this point, And they have like less than 10,000 miles. So I'd definitely be upset if I had to deal with that on a car I spent, you know, over a hundred thousand dollars on brand new from BMW. But let's just keep our fingers crossed and hope that by the time it makes it to these smaller chassis vehicles, they'll have all of those buttons ironed out. So at least in my case, if I was adamant about jumping into a TU2, what I'd probably do is go ahead and get a 24 model year vehicle, maybe lease it for two years. And then after the lease is up, then I can jump into a TU2 vehicle. By that point, maybe they'll have the high output version available. They should hopefully have worked through all of the these initial reliability issues that they've had with the cylinder head and maybe you'll have some more tuning options available if you're looking for higher horsepower setups so yeah again just personally speaking i probably wouldn't jump into the tu2 right away if you want a four series lci then of course that's going to be the only option to get those you know list of features with the new headlights and taillights and everything else we expect with the new body design language but just from an engine standpoint, I don't think that it's worth it to wait. So yeah, hopefully that answers all of your questions. If you guys have any other insights or you know suggestions, feel free to let me know. But I think that's pretty much it for this video. So thank you guys for watching and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.